Quizzes is an awesome tool for teachers in order to collect formative data on students and see how they're going. It's also a really fun tool that the students enjoy using and they actually don't realize that they're being tested and quizzed, which is an awesome feature as well. Hi there, welcome to the channel. My name is Mark, I'm a high school maths teacher. I'm here with my cat today in order to show you how to use quizzes effectively as a teacher and I'm going to show you basically a rundown of all of its features and I'm going to give you some tips about how you can use it effectively. So let's dive in. So here I am on the main page of quizzes. Uh, you have to create an account so just sign up. It's completely free and you can see here on the left it says a basic account for Mr. O'Donoghue. That's me. Um, so everything I'm going to show you in the video today you can do because I can do. I don't have an actual account to this. It's not sponsored by quizzes or anything like that. So everything I can do you can do. Now the first thing I want to talk about is not actually creating a quiz, it's just using a quiz. Because sometimes, and presumably if you're watching this video, you just want to get started and get something going. So the first thing you want to look at is what will you teach today? I want to look for a quiz on let's say world geography. So I just type in world geography and it's going to come up with all the different quizzes people have made for world geography. So if I click quiz, uh, this quiz in particular, it's going to show me all of the questions in this quiz. And if I go through and let's say I am a uh, United States of America teacher. So for example, questions like what time zone is California in? And that's relevant to my context. This quiz looks pretty good to me. I might just click start a live quiz. Now I'm going to get into actually running the quiz later in the video. If that's you, you might want to just jump forward into that chapter. The link, the timestamps are in the description down below. Uh, but if you're interested in making your own quiz and making it more relevant to your context as a teacher, keep watching from this point because I'm going to go through creating a quiz now. So if we want to create our own quiz, we just click this create button on the left of the screen and it's going to give you a little pop up here. So I'm going to click quiz um, and I'm going to type in a quiz name. Let's go world geography again. And it can also allow you to choose relevant subjects. So for example, geography, that makes complete sense to me. And that's going to allow it to uh, allow quizzes that is to put your quiz with all of the other geography quizzes and make sure it comes up when people search for geography or click it as a topic. So I'm going to click next now and there is initially no questions in your quiz but the best feature of quizzes by far is the ability to teleport questions from the quizzes library. So world geography I can search for that now and it's going to populate with all of the quizzes that are related to this search term of world geography. So if I go into this quiz that I was looking at earlier in the video, I see that there's a question, how many continents are there in the world? Now, if I like this question and I think it's relevant to my students, I can just click add question. And that's going to put the question into my quiz. Immediately, I don't have to come up with the question myself, which is by far the best part about quizzes for sure. Now looking at the second question, how many states are there in the United States? I'm an Australian and that's probably not a question that I would expect students to know. Not that I'm a geography teacher, but I wouldn't really have it hyper focused on the United States. So I don't have to add that question. I can just move to the next one, which is a picture of Africa. And therefore I say, yes, that is uh, related to what I want to teach. So I can click add question there. Let's say though you're going through the quizzes and you find a quiz that you like look at every question and you go, you know what, all of those questions are cool and they're really good for me. You can click add all 12 questions here and it'll put them all straight into your quiz. So let's say you do that for a few quizzes and you're happy with that. You can then click out of this option box and here is your quiz that has been created. You can move questions up and down. So you click to reorder and then move them into an order that satisfies you. That's really easy to do. Click save there to save the order of the questions. You can also edit them. So for example, if you didn't want all these to be capitals, continents, you wanted them to just be lowercase, you can do that there. You can add an answer explanation as well. I'm not going to do that though. And this is kind of what the options are for the students when they play the game. They can, they get these colored cards and they get to pick. Um, there's an equation editor, by the way. So if you're a mathematics teacher like me, you can put in things like uh, if I have A and then you click this button, it gives you the A squared. So the, the notation's there for students um, and it looks a bit nicer, which is pretty cool as well. 
Uh, once you've done with that, there's a button down the bottom. You can click save, which I'm going to click. And you'll notice that's changed here. Now to publish this quiz and get going, you just need to click up in the very top right corner, save. And you can add an image if you'd like, geography and search. And it's there's a uh, an image library already on quizzes, which is cool. I'll pick this picture of the globe and insert that. And once it's inserted, here's the picture here. Select languages, English is happy. I'm fine with that. From grades, let's say seven to eighth. This information that you're providing is for other people who want, may want to use your quiz. They may search for geography, grades seven to eight, and in English, and your quiz might come up, which is cool if you want other people to use your quiz as well. So I'm gonna click save now. It's public as well, and it's going to publish the quiz. And now I can just start the quiz. The other thing is, if you go to my library, it's now going to be in your library, as well as all of your other quizzes that you've made over the years. And as you make more and more, I've created 33 and I've used 30, they'll all be in here. I've created some of these, some of these weren't created by me, but I've used them in the past. For example, um, this Ring of Fire one, uh, this Transformations one and so on. So it really is up to you whether you're just going to use one of the automatically generated ones that are on here already, or whether you create your own. But it's definitely fast and efficient and easy to create a quiz for yourself. So now let's actually create a quiz and see what it looks like in action. So to do that, we either go create quiz or explore and find another one or click the quiz you've already made. And I prefer to click start a live quiz. If you click assign homework asynchronous learning, it's more of just a homework task and students can do it at their own pace, which is handy and has its merits. I typically use quizzes though for a live action, I guess game more than anything that I can collect formative data about. I click classic so the students can move at their own pace and there's a bunch of options that you can click and change. Some of them are for only uh, super, I guess, paid members. Uh, I don't change them anyway, so I'm going to move down. I like to click unlimited attempts for students because if they get something wrong or they get a, a result they're not happy with, I like them to be able to refresh the page, go back in and attempt the quiz again and get them right this time. I think that's what learning is all about. And it's actually really useful information. If you can see a student has gone in, gotten say 60% and then they try again and get 90%, that's really awesome to see. The other thing I like to switch on is this thing called Name Factory. This means that when students log in or join the quiz, it, they are prompted and given a name that they can either accept or refresh and try and uh, like randomize a different name. But the point of this is that it avoids the issues of students writing rude things or just writing the wrong thing. And I think the students don't really like it at the start. They're like, why can't I write my own name? But eventually they really get on board with the names and I'll show you them later. Show answers during activity I think is extremely important. Show answers after activity also extremely important. I'd have both of them on if I were you. But of course, these settings are up to you. You can have a look through and choose the ones that apply to you the most, I suppose. Redemption of fun, that means in the quiz, the students get the option to redo a question that they've gotten wrong previously in the quiz, which is really fun. And it really gives them a chance to learn from it. Um, power ups is the bread and butter of quizzes and what separates it from other um, applications and software like Socrative and Microsoft Forms and stuff. Power ups are just basically things like for a question, kids can get double points or they can use 50 50 like in who wants to be a millionaire, that sort of thing. And it makes it a lot more fun for them and engaging. I turn the timer off. Uh, I don't want to stress them out as they're doing a question, especially in maths where <laughs> Even though it's multiple choice, a lot of the times they have to do working out. I don't want to rush them and I want them to actually do it properly. So I like to turn the timer off. Live reactions is for in the lobby before the game. I'll talk about that. Showing the leaderboard I think is great. And I'll talk about that. Shuffle questions and shuffle answer options. Uh, it's really up to you. You can if you want, I do for both. You can put music on, you can put memes on. Uh, I find they're a little bit distracting, but they are fun for students. So if you're struggling to get buy-in, maybe you can turn memes on. They just show a funny meme at the end of every question, which is, I guess, kind of fun. Once you're happy with your settings though, go back up to the top. I like to pick classic. You can play around with team and test. It's up to you. And I'm going to hit continue. And here is the homepage for the quiz, I suppose. For a student to join your quiz, 
they need to go to joinmyquiz.com, which they can just type into Google, and then they click enter join code. So they type in this code into the prompt box from joinmyquiz.com. Or if your students have devices and you're projecting in front of the classroom or on a Teams call or Zoom call or something like that, you can project this QR code and kids can scan it and join that way, which is a handy feature also. Um, I'm gonna join here on my phone so you can see what it's kind of like. Alrighty, so I've gone to joinmyquiz.com and now I'm gonna type in the code 591506 and click join game. And that's gonna prompt me to choose my name, right? So my first choice is Charlotte Stevens. If the students don't like that, they can have another go at guessing. Uh, Durham Dracula, or maybe one more option. Durian Dumbledore, I'm a big Harry Potter fan, so I think I'm gonna go with Durian Dumbledore. They have a couple of settings down below, read text aloud, put music on or sound effects, up to them, and click start. Once they've selected start, you can see on the main screen, Durian Dumbledore has arrived. By the way, if you don't choose these names and a student puts in a silly name or a name you didn't want them to put, you can easily just hover over and click to remove that participant. So it's not a huge deal if you don't have these names, but I do recommend it. Um, once a student is on there, they can, you can see in the screen on my phone, in the bottom right corner, there's this reactions tab. The students can, uh, I guess spam and I find while the students are waiting they get very excited about trying to get one of these emojis as high as possible uh, and they team up and they you know try and get certain ones to win and so on so that's a nice little uh, feature to put and it keeps the students busy while they're waiting for their peers to join. With that said though, uh, you don't have to wait for all the students to join in order to start the quiz. Once you start the quiz, this code will still be displayed on the screen and the students can join at any time. So that might be an option for you as well. If you've got a few students with technical difficulties, you can go ahead and start and they can join later. So if I click start now, it's going to start naturally. And there's two things you can see. First things first on the screen, you can see the leaderboard, Durian Dumbledore is the only one here at the moment. But of course, uh, there will be many, many students when you use it. In fact, uh, I'm going to put a video on the screen now of a different quiz that I ran when I was exploring that with a bunch of students in here. There's a top five option where you can select uh, only the top five results to be shown, which is nice if you don't wanna show all the students down below who are not doing as well. Um, you can also go into the quiz by questions and see which question is doing well, uh, who's, who's doing well on which question, um, which questions are students finding easy, which questions are students finding hard, which is valuable information for you as a teacher because it tells you straight away how well are you doing with different topics I suppose what did you teach well what did the students miss what misconceptions are there uh, if we look at my device however um, this is what it looks like for the students in which con continent is Australia found I would probably write Oceania <laughs> I think it is anyway or it might just be the continent Australia I got it right 600 points sweet it shows me my results and moves me on to question two. Uh, what is the largest country in North America? I would say the United States of America. Probably USA is a correct answer. Oh, so Canada. So presumably it meant by land mass, a uh, land area, not um, population, which is how I interpret it, but there you go. So those were two ones where I input answers. This is a third one, which is multiple choice. Which of the following combinations is found in Asia? Gabon is in Africa, so no. Papua New Guinea, South uh, New Caledonia, Fiji, they're all in Oceania, so no. Mongolia, Bangladesh, Cambodia, yes. Estonia, Hungary, Macedonia, no. So I'm gonna click Mongolia, Bangladesh, Cambodia. Before I do, you can see at the bottom of my screen for the students, there are a bunch of power-ups. I could choose the eraser to eliminate one incorrect option. I could choose 50-50. I'm pretty confident though, so I might just pick times two for twice as many points for this question and slam in the correct answer, which gives me double points, which the kids get very excited about. So with that said, that's how the quiz is run. You can see it appearing here on my screen. Um, questions, I can go through and see especially if I sort by accuracy, that these questions the students are doing really well at, whereas this question, the largest country in North America, students aren't doing well at. So either the question is flawed, like it's not written well, like I think it's not, or the students don't really get it at all. So it's up to you how you interpret that. In any case, the quiz is 
running and you can see the accuracy at the top. Once you're done or the kids are all done, you can just click end quiz and click yes. And the extra thing that quizzes does, which is awesome, is it generates you a report. We're gonna watch the leaderboard here where I win. So I'm the best at geography in this class. Um, what you can do is you can review questions, you can assign it for homework for students to have a go again. There's a few quiz highlights like toughest question, etc. You can download the results or you can click play again. What I'm actually interested in doing is going back to the home page though. So here on the home page, the last feature I want to take you through with regards to quizzes is this reports tab on the left. So once I'm in reports, um, you can go into any of these quizzes you want and find out much more detailed information about how the students went. So for example, if I go into this probability one here, uh, it's gonna show all the students on the left, which is gonna be more informative for you if you don't have these names on. So if you get the students to write their actual names, this will be more meaningful to you. Um, it's still probably useful. You might be able to write down the students' names next to their fake names as they're playing the game if you want, that's another option. In any case, it shows which students nailed it. So 30 out of 30s for these two, or these three, sorry. And it goes down in order of accuracy all the way down to not very accurate at all. But that's because this person only attempted one question, didn't attempt 29. I'd be more concerned with something like this, um, who answered all the questions and got 19 right and 11 wrong. I'd be maybe having a chat to that student and having um, a conversation about which ones they struggle with, why do they think they did, that sort of thing. This is a really awesome thing. Um, you can also look at the questions themselves rather than how the students went. And you can sort instead by question order, but by accuracy, just like the live version. So this question, the students nailed, but if we go to the bottom, there was a question down here where the students really struggled. And not only did they struggle, let's say this one here, not only did they struggle, but there was a clear second biggest choice. So there might be a misconception between these two answers, okay? Um, which is a very, very, very cool and handy feature. It allows you to kind of look at your teaching as a whole and especially the questions part, look at your teaching and say, I taught these content topics well, but clearly something went wrong with a particular topic. So let's reteach that. You're informing your teaching. And then if you look at the participants one, this is where you can look at students individually. So rather than you, you look at the students, who's doing well, who understands, who's struggling a little bit, and you can intervene where necessary. Now with all of that said, there are so many features on Quizzes. I think it's a really awesome tool. I think you should check it out yourself and explore it, create some quizzes, import some questions, and run it with your kids and see if they enjoy it. I guarantee you that they will, and they won't even feel like they're learning or that they're being tested, which is a nice byproduct as well. If you have enjoyed the video and you found it useful, make sure you like the video. And if you use quizzes or are planning to use quizzes, let us know in the comments below how your experience was or why you're excited to try it out. I've been Mark. I uh, really hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.